React Native Developers, I hope you are well, William here recording from beautiful Zurich Switzerland. In the past few days, I've been into a rabbit hole of 2D transformations. And in this video, I would like to show you two things. One very practical, which you can take away immediately. And another one, not so practical, but that might be a lot of fun down the line. Let's have a look. So here we have our pinch gesture example from previous uh, video. And the key to success in building the example was for us to be able to simplify the original transformation into a simpler transformation with which we could have offset values for when the gesture is released. So originally we had a translation, a translation of origin, scale, translation of minus origin and we were able to simplify it into a translation and scale transformation. And we wanted to do this because here, when we release the gesture, we can simply keep the translation into a translation offset and the scale into a scale offset. So when we start the gesture again, we apply the transformation on the previously transformed image. And so we could keep the state of the transformation into two animation values. And the way we did it, the way we made the simplification here was done here. So we have the translation, the translation of origin. And since the translate minus origin was done after scaling, we intuitively knew that we needed to multiply the origin vector by the scale, uh, the scale of the gesture. There are mathematical ways we can get to this result, but it felt intuitive. What about a, maybe a little bit more complex transformation, the rotate transformation? So here we are gonna replace the pinch gesture handler by the rotation gesture handler. The API is very similar. So I'm gonna use this component here. And for call X is called anchor X. For call Y is called anchor Y. And I'm going to rename some variables. So gesture scales became the rotation, which we can pass here as parameter. Scale becomes rotate. Scale offset becomes rotate offset. Here default values are zero. It's not one anymore. And so here, I'm gonna, we're going to look at this one last. So. He, here we need to set the rotate offset to be rotate. The uh, rotation goes back to zero. And here rotate, oops, so it's rotate offset here. And here rotate is not gesture scale multiply scale offset, but it's rotate rotation plus rotate offset. And here it's rotate instead of scale. So now the interesting part, how do we calculate the, trans the translation of minus origin here? So we can find it on Wikipedia. If we go on uh, the rotation Wikipedia page, and we're going to use this formula here. So we're going to create a function called um, with rotate. And the first parameter is going to be a vector. So, and it's going to be the rotation. So rotate as a second parameter. And so we're going to apply the formula from Wikipedia, which is, so that's not very readable, but X is um, so the subtraction of multiply VX 
times cos theta. I'm just going to remake this one theta. And Vy times sin theta. And y is add of vx times sin theta plus I assume vy times cos theta, yes. Vy times cos theta. Need to import these functions. Oops. Vector is from redash. Does it multiply? Ah. Okay. Uh, so I'm missing one parenthesis here and here as well. Yes. So let's apply now this function. So we have we we have the minus origin vector. That's correct. And we're going to do with rotate. So we have minus origin and the rotation is rotation. And so here I need to update the dependencies. Let's have a look. So here I can rotate and it nicely changes the origin of transformation. So if the 2D transformations you are doing is scale, rotation, you have easy ways to always keep an offset value of the transformation. What about any 2D transformations? So here I have any random 2D transformation. So I can add some translation, scaling. We have a skewing rotate. I mean, it doesn't matter. We can change any of these parameters as long as they are in two dimensions. And what I want to do is to be able to keep uh, an offset value for any um, 2D transformations in React Native. And the way I'm testing that the algorithm works is by first rendering it directly with React Native. So I'm getting the transformation matrix from React Native and I pass it as a view. And then I'm getting the same transformation matrix, but we've reanimated. And I'm using a function called decompose2d that gives me um, these transformation values that I can use to display the exact same transformation, but in reanimated. So you see here the two cards are overlaid. But so this means that I can, that I can express any 2D transformations using this transformation. So I can convert any 2D transformations to this uh, translate, rotate, scale, rotate transformation. And I think it's very cool. I'm not sure uh, what it can be used for. I think there might be some really cool use cases uh, that we can use using such uh, property. I'm still trying to uh, figure it out, but I wanted to show it to you that you see here you have two cards overlaid on top of each other. So maybe here I can move one around quickly so you can see by maybe 20 pixels. So you see two cards that are always overlaid on top of each other. And here I can write any 2D transformations. It doesn't matter. I can do whatever. They seem to always uh, perfectly align. So 
no matter how complex is your two-day transformation, you have an easy way to keep offset values for your transformation on the UI thread using reanimated. I think we can do something cool with this and let's find out in the upcoming videos. Before wishing you a happy hacking, if you are interested to learn the fundamentals of gestures and animations in React Native, I recommend to check out my online course at Start React Native. My goal with this course is to provide you with all the tools and knowledge necessary in order to build incredible user experiences in React Native that will run at 60 FPS even on low-grade Android devices. So guys, today was more 2D advanced transformations. If our transformations are made of scales and rotations, we have a simple mathematical tools that we can use in order to keep offset values uh, of the transformation across time. I've shown you a tool where we can do it for any random 2D transformations. I'm not sure yet what we can do with this tool, but I hope that we can do something really cool with it. So I'm really looking forward to talk to you soon. And in the meantime, happy hacking.